All right, so what we want to do, go ahead and open up your web browser, any web browser you'd like, and we'll go back to WordPress.com. We want to log in to our WordPress site that we created last week. If for whatever reason you can't log back into it, try to retrieve your password, or worst case scenario, create a new account. It's free. But go back to WordPress.com, log in. Top right corner, click log in. Go ahead and do so, and then once we log in, we can then we can then get back to the topics at hand. So as I said previously, when, uh, when you log into WordPress, the first thing that you're going to see is the, the reader view, which is, uh, in the long scheme of things, valuable, but not for us at the moment, because WordPress, again, is like half a website blog building platform and half a social network, the WordPress.com, and that we can follow other people's blogs and such. And that is valuable if we think about it in the longer term because uh, we will touch also on social media in this class that it's valuable to be on Twitter or Facebook or whatever because that could help get me traffic back to my website. But for us at the moment, we don't need the reader. We need to switch over to My Sites on the top left, so click My Sites. And you should see then you have the ability I've got more than one site here and I mentioned this previously that you have the ability to create more than one WordPress site at wordpress.com so I, I need to click to switch here over to my bakery my, my fictional bakery company and remember we were choosing a name part of the homework is Obviously, I need to know where your website is at. So you do need to make a note of what your web address is, and it should be right next to the title that you gave it. My particular one is thecoolvictorsbakerycom.wordpress.com. So to some degree, the name doesn't quite matter. So that's, gonna, that's the name of my site. But as per the homework, when we get to that, you'll need to provide me. What's your address? So I can check out your site, so I can give you a grade. But here then, I, I'm going to click to view it, and if your left menu over here then says WP Admin, click on it so we can get back to the whole admin power screen. If your link does not say WP Admin, you can get back to it by going to your address. So if mine is victor.wordpress.com, I go to slash WP-admin. So if you don't see that admin link on the menu, you can go to it with your direct address like that. Go ahead and go to your dashboard, your WP admin, the power user screen. Because once we get to the point of having a full featured, full powered WordPress over at Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever, we're going to have this. We're not going to have those training wheels of WordPress.com. We're going to have the dashboard like that. So let's make sure we can all get there. Does everyone at the dashboard, anyone need any help? Okay, so at the moment, um, let's scroll down to settings, reading. 
down on the reading settings. So hover over settings, go to reading. At the moment, our particular type of site is a blog. I want to set this up as a static site. In, and like the examples I've shown in the previous classes where you have a home page that stays static and then you have your blogs in a blog page and right now it's not like that right now the latest blog post takes over the home page well if we select I want my front page to be a static page I need then a placeholder for my front page and a placeholder for my blog posts we can't quite do it yet because I don't have any pages there that I can assign as placeholders. So we're going to set this properly in just a moment. But what we need are those placeholders. It's asking for pages. A page for your front page placeholder and a page for your blog posts page holder. Okay, so actually what we need to do first is on the left side under pages, hover over pages and select add new. Go to pages, add new. title of our page, simply we'll call it home, and then click um, in your editor here, and we'll just type a very simple welcome message, we can refine it later, you'll have to do that for your homework, but we'll just type for the moment, welcome to my site. So we've got posts, we've got pages. Pages are going to be these static screens that don't change. About page, contact page, products page. As opposed to posts, which change, which are blog posts. I'm going to write a blog this week, and next month I'll write another blog post. And in two more months I'm going to write another one, and, and so forth. So blog pages change on a regular basis, and posts, I'm sorry, backwards, blog uh, posts change on a regular basis and pages don't. Here we can add pictures and bold and all of that stuff but we won't have to worry about it just yet. Go ahead and publish that on the right side. Top right click publish. This is going to be our placeholder then for our home page. We will go to add another page on the left side notice we can add a new page here or at the top we've got edit page add new let's add another page this one is going to be our blog post blog page that is we'll call it blog and we'll just say read our blog and then we will publish it So this is going to be our placeholder to display our blog posts. We don't want our main site to be a blog. We want our main site to be a traditional kind of website with a blog. But our blog stuff is going to be moved over to the blog screen. So make sure you publish your blog. And now that we've got a home page and a blog page, let's go back to settings, reading, settings menu reading and now we can select here I wish they would change the terminology a bit here I wish it would say what does your front page display it says front page displays and after I tell you what it is it makes sense but I wish it would say what does your front page display your latest posts or a static page and then instead of front page and post page I wish it would say select your front page select your blog page but anyway change that to a static page 
front page. Now we have our home placeholder. And on posts, now we have a blog placeholder. At the very bottom, go to Save. So scroll all the way down to select Save Changes. <clears throat> and to see the result, you want to hover over My Sites at the top left and select View Site. You went to Settings View, you said, right? Settings Reading. Oh. So now on my particular page, uh, I've got home, welcome to my site. And I've got um, the blog post that I wrote last week. I don't actually see it. Well, I see it here under recent posts, but that's not what I mean. I mean, where's my menu? I want some sort of menu that shows me my content. So one of the stumbling blocks on WordPress is that sometimes it can be pretty dumb. It doesn't know what you want. And what I want is a menu so that I can navigate my pages. I don't have a menu. Now, these things over here look like a menu, like this search and recent posts and all of that, but they're not really the menu. And this over here also says recent posts and comments. My particular setup might look different than yours. You might have a different theme. We'll get back to themes again later. But I don't have a button anywhere that says blog. I created a page called blog, but I don't see a button. You might see it on yours, but um, I don't see a blog link. That's because I need to work with my menu. I'm going to hover over my site again, and I'm going to select WP Admin to go back to the dashboard. So hover over your site and then WP Admin. Hover over Appearance and we'll select Menus. We have a whole little area here for um, working with menus. We'll go back to our dashboard and go over Appearance, Menus. So what I've got here is my whole menu editing system, and this is pretty cool, pretty powerful, because let's say my company, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to sell some, uh, I'm going to have some sales. There are certain times of the year where I really make a lot of money selling my baked goods. Let's say, you know, for Valentine's, that's one of the times. And so I can create a menu system that the buttons of the menu have certain things up there perfect for Valentine's. Then on another part of the year, I change my menu items, my menu links, to something else. So I can create multiple menus and activate them or use them however I want, whenever I want, in this menus screen. But first, in my case, it says, edit your menu below or create a new menu. Click create a new menu. We need a menu name, and we can call it anything, but I'll call it Main Menu. It says give your menu a name, click Create. So let's give it a name and click Create Menu. <clears throat> and so now I've got the name of my menu, what are the items in the menu, the menu structure, and then more importantly, where am I displaying the menu? Because this is very confusing for beginners also. I create a menu, I fill it with my links, but then I still don't see it. And I don't see it because this. I forget this. Theme location. Where will my menu be located in my design, in my theme? My particular theme has a primary menu section and a social links menu section. If you've got a different theme, you might have more or less. But this always trips up beginners. I made my menu, I don't see it anywhere. Of course, you didn't select where to see it. Let's select primary menu, or whatever yours is called, if it's a different kind of theme. And now, from the left side here, I can add pages to the menu, or posts, custom links, categories, formats. 
but under pages, under the tab view all, I've got home, about, blog, and home. Mine's home twice, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to select home, about, and blog. I got the same thing in there, reason. Technically, because we have a built in home and we created a home page, technically, they're two different things. One of those two will be the right one. I think either of them will work, so it doesn't quite matter, but you can fix it. So I'm going to select the first one, Home, About, and Blog, and then Add to the menu. So now my menu structure will have Home, About, and Blog. And it will be displayed, in my case, the primary menu. Go ahead and save it, and visit site. View site. So save your menu, go back to my site view site, and on my particular theme, I've got it there on the top right home about blog. If I click on blog, there's the blog I wrote last time TIS 255 day two. I click on About. Um, we didn't create the About page. Uh, WordPress gave us a default About page, but we can edit it, of course. And then we've got Home, and Home takes me back to the Home page here. So did everyone get your menu to show up? Anyone need any help? So um, I've got a menu, and uh, I'm going to add another item to the menu, and I'm going to rearrange my elements in my menu a bit. I can do that relatively easily. So I need to go back to the WP Admin. Let's go back to the dashboard. 
Let's go back to Appearance uh, Menus. My current main menu is active, and these are the items in my menu. Let's say, in my case, I was going to link over to social media, to some of my social media. With this particular theme, I also have a menu location for social media. I'm not going to assume you all have it, so don't worry that mine has it and yours doesn't. But here's how I want to do it. I have got these three links in my menu, and I want to make a new item called social. And when someone clicks on social, it drops down to show Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. So we can add that to our menu. It doesn't have to only rely on pages or posts that exist on my site because these would be custom links. So let's try this. Under the custom link section on the left, um, the address here, here's our trick. Um, we're going to type a Facebook. Go ahead and type, if you've got a Facebook page, we can type its address. If you don't have Facebook, we can borrow my company's Facebook, which is facebook.com slash pmdinteractive. And the link text is what text does it, does it show on the, uh, on, the, on the menu. It's simply going to say Facebook. Add to menu. So now I'm going to have a Facebook link. I'm, it's not exactly how, how I envisioned it, like I said a moment ago. We're, we're getting there. Let's say I also want to add another one. Let's say I want to add Twitter. So if you've got a Twitter, you can add your Twitter address there, twitter.com slash whatever, or take mine, which is PMD Interactive, and the link will be Twitter. say this one. Uh, we mentioned this on the very first day, and I'll mention it again. There's a brand new social network that came out about a month ago, and at least one person mentioned it. Don't mention it again. Has anyone else heard of the brand new social network that just came out this year? Peach. So you can add a peach link here. You can type peach.cool, not .com, .cool, slash add slash the username in my case PMD interactive so peach.cool slash add slash PMD interactive and this is the social network peach go ahead and add that to the menu And don't do this yet, but if I were to then check my site, I would see something like home about blog, Facebook, Twitter, Peach. What I want is home about blog, social media, and then when you click social media, it drops down to have those networks. I don't want each of those networks to take up a space. I want them to be sub-elements. So what we want to further do with our menu here is this trick. We're going to add another custom link. This time the URL is going to be simply the pound sign. No HTTP or anything, just the pound sign. This creates a dummy link. This makes it behave like a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. So I want a menu item that looks like it's clickable. It doesn't do anything. And then I want it to say on the link text, social. So my vision is that there will be a button that says social. It doesn't go anywhere, but when you click on it, it'll pop open to show you Facebook, Twitter, Peach. Add that to the menu. And then what we need to do is rearrange these. You can click and drag. Do you notice you get this four-headed arrow on each of these little boxes? This is the order that my items are found on the menu. And when I hover my mouse over any one of them, I get the four-headed arrow. Well, then what I'm going to do is click and drag Facebook so that it's under social. But look at this up here for a moment. I've got these dotted lines here or here. 
you want to move your menu item so that its dotted lines are indented below the item, and then now it'll be a drop-down element of the social link. So then I'll move Twitter, but be careful here because if I put it as a as a right here, this would be a drop-down menu item of a drop-down menu item. No, I want it to be on the same level as that. See this left alignment. If I move Peach down here, and if I put it right here, whoops, that's going to be dr drop social drop down, Twitter drop down, and then Peach. It doesn't make sense for me. So I want to make sure they're on the same level like that. Save that, visit site, or view site, and then check your result. Again, depending on your theme, it's going to look different ways. I made my menu, I saved my menu, I go back to view site, and now instead of it being like that, notice mine, home about blog, drop down for social, hover over social, and it says Twitter, Peach, <coughs> Facebook. I can click on a Facebook link and it goes over to Facebook, I can click on Twitter, etc. But what I would like is that when someone clicks on one of those links that goes over to one of my external sites, I want that other site to open in its own window. At the moment, if uh, oh uh, who else does it actually open on its own window? No one else. Okay, let's talk about that. If yours already did it, cool. If not, let me talk about that. So um, it might depend on your theme. But I would want that when I click on Facebook, it opens in a new window. And the use for that is that if someone goes to visit Twitter, they spend some time on Twitter, then they close the window of Twitter, they also closed my site. I want it to open in its own window so that when they're done with Twitter, they close Twitter, they're still on my site. Let's go back to the dashboard and go back to the menus. These items of the menu, they also have a little drop-down triangle. So on Facebook, there's a little triangle at the end there. Click on that. That's where you can open it up, and if you misspelled your address, you can fix it. If you want to change the text there, you can fix it, and then title, don't worry about title really. But we also have an extra item to make it open in its own window, except that oftentimes by default that extra little trick is turned off. It's off on mine. There is no button that says open in its own window on, in my case. And so we need to activate that. At the top right corner we have screen options. Click Screen Options tab at the top right corner, and under Show Advanced Menu Properties, you want to activate the Link Target. Link Target, when you turn that on, now I've got a brand new item right here. Open Link in a New Window. I'm turn that on. And I, yes, I have to do that also for Twitter and for Peach. But you're not going to see that open in, a open in a new link, open link in a new tab, unless you activate that screen option. WordPress is very powerful and there are many things that are off by default because not everyone needs every aspect of WordPress. Um, this I want to turn on and it was hidden so I turned it on. Why didn't you do that? Didn't do that? No, Oh, okay. Go ahead and save the menu and then view your site and see the difference. It's on the one hand subtle, but what, what's going to happen is when someone clicks Facebook, it's going to open in a new tab or window. And when they're done with Facebook, they close the Facebook tab, they're still on my site.
question. Yes. Is there a way to change the size of the uh, menus? Yes, and that's going to be my answer that I'm going to give many times. It depends on your theme. Uh, your particular themes menu might be, you know, really, really big, I think. And so probably looking at, if you, if you look under Customize, there's probably going to be some sort of option under Customize to help you with that. And we'll look at it during the break, but it's going to depend on your theme. All right, so did everyone get those uh, social media links? Okay. My particular theme, my design, uh, looks kind of boring, um, but I'm seeing the potential for a good design because on the right side I have like a, a sidebar, and, and then at the bottom I have a sidebar. But it says the same thing, and I don't quite like that. Um, so let's explore some of the customization for our particular theme. Uh, if we go back to the, we'll do it like this. So let's let's go back to the WP admin, and let's go over to appearance themes. And just so that we're all looking at the same thing, some of us have different themes. Mine is the 2016 theme, and then there's these other ones. Remember I mentioned this previously. I think people chose different themes. Just so that we're kind of looking at the same thing, um, I'm going to give it a shot with... Um, Canapé. Do you see a theme called Canapé? C-A-N-A-P-E. Canapé. If you don't see Canapé, uh, you can, at the top, click Search Themes. C-A-N-A-P-E. Enter. And that should bring up the Canapé theme. Part of the homework will be to change your theme and such, but for the moment, so that we're all looking at the same thing, let's all select the Canapé theme. Uh, so here under theme, search at the top canopy, and then if you hover your mouse over the theme, click activate. Activate your canopy theme. Uh, you might get a pop-up about customize. Just close that and view your site. So my design is I've got this top bar and there's my menu items. Notice the design of that looks a little different. They put a little animation on that drop down. That's interesting. Then you've got your main area for home. Something about testimonials. You've got this footer area. So my blog is still there, and my about content is still there, and my links, you know, my content is still intact. But really, with the click of a button, now I've got a new design. This is one of the great things about WordPress. In the old days, if you're using the classic method of HTML and such, you had to work pretty hard to get all your pages to look new under the new design. If you used Dreamweaver templates, that made it a lot easier, but still there was a lot of rough around the edges. On WordPress, many times you can just select the new theme and it's it's done. Sometimes you do have a little, you know, a few little loose ends that you have to fix here and there. Maybe your menu didn't didn't get attached to the right place. Well, I would go back to my menus screen and I would make sure that it's set to the primary menu. It might have accidentally gone to my footer menu for some reason. Well, you can easily fix that. But uh, at this point here, uh, I'll go back to the dashboard. I'll go to Appearance. 
menu and let's see customization customize so appearance customize since we're all looking at the same theme we'll have some similarities here but if we had different themes we would get uh, different editing options here I have on the left side this uh, this editor this is my current theme which I can change custom design so depending on your theme you're gonna have a variety of editable elements I've got custom design let's see what's under this one custom design with a custom design part of the premium plan you can make your blog look and feel okay so they're just gonna tell me that if you pay for the premium version of WordPress I can get more customization options no that's fine no thanks I'm gonna go back site title tagline here's where I can edit some of this I can put a logo here on this particular theme I can select to add a logo I don't have any pictures to work with but if I did I would add a logo and it would show up at the top let's see colors and backgrounds so I went back and I went to colors and backgrounds so I'm gonna see what's this this color here uh, palette like this one or this one so I've got a few little bits of customization not a whole huge amount of editing abilities uh, they really promote the the premium the paid version but we'll be fine without it that was under my colors and backgrounds I'll go back and I won't look at all of these but I can change some of the fonts here then I can look at the menus widgets we'll look at that in a moment static front page we talked about that already Theme, what else here? Theme options. Footer, front page. Footer, show site title and description in the footer. My particular one says create a free website or blog at WordPress. I don't quite like that, so what if I remove that? Well, that's not too impressive. Footer widget area background image. I can put a picture in the footer as well. Page show testimonials. Nah, I won't use testimonials from page featured menu. This list is populated. Featured image, front page featured menu section. So I have some customization, and this is going to depend on my theme. What, what is the theme author basically allowing me to change? At the bottom of this site editor, it says basically view your site as if someone visits on a desktop. How does it look like when someone visits on a tablet? How does it look like when someone's on a cell phone? So basically, we've got a responsive website. Notice how my menu changed. When I'm on a desktop and I have a lot of space, it shows my menu like this. But when I'm on a tablet or a phone, it collapses it into this drop-down element. So this is known as a responsive site, responsive web design. It responds to the size of the screen. So your site looks nice on a big screen like this, and it looks nice on a small screen like this, responsive. It's a big thing nowadays. and to think about it in longer terms when we get to that for, for SEO, having a responsive site nowadays is very, very important for SEO. If your site doesn't look good on a mobile device, that could really hurt your SEO. That could have Google or Bing or Yahoo, whatever, push you down and not show you on page one because your website doesn't look good on mobile. Because more and more traffic is coming through mobile. Less on a desktop or laptop, more through mobile. We have one of these in our pocket all day long, probably, or in our purse. I don't have my laptop with me all day, but I've got a mobile with me all day. And what I can do with that is just about anything with a regular computer. So now the search engines are like, you better have a good-looking site that looks good on mobile, 
or that's going to penalize you. Click Save and Publish. Any changes that you made will become permanent once you click Save and Publish. I'm going to close this. It goes back to my dashboard. And if I visit site, I edited a couple things here and there. Back to the admin. We'll go back to the admin and let's go over appearance widgets. We've looked at themes, customize menus. Let's look at widgets. Widgets are sort of like um, mini apps, kind of, that let you do things uh, or display things. And you've got uh, a two columns here on the left and the right. On the left, I've got available widgets, and then at the very, very bottom, I've got inactive widgets. But notice, here's some things that I can do. I can display about me information. I can display blog stats to the user. I can display a contact info box. Uh, I can display my Flickr photos. So these are things I can do, things I can show the visitor. And I use them on the right side over here. I've got a main sidebar, first footer widget, second first front page, second front page, third front page. So I've got these little areas throughout my site where I can put things. Currently mine has main sidebar and all of these things here. So I'm seeing them here. Search, recent posts, recent comments, categories. Search, recent posts, recent comments, categories. Let's say for the moment I want to clear all of these little widgets out. So drag each of these from the right to the left. Just drop them on the left. Just drag them away from there. There's no save here. As soon as you do it, if you drag it around, it'll, it'll do it. There's nothing to save or confirm, so we have to be careful. Because what I've done is I removed these widgets with the customization. I moved them out of the way, and now whatever customization I did was gone. So if I change the font, or if I change the content of that widget, and I moved it away like I just did, I lose it. It doesn't matter for the moment, but in my case now, my website I want to customize my page a little bit more. Um, let's say contact info. I want to drag contact info. I want to drag it from the available widget area. I want to drag it into main sidebar. And notice this. It asks me to fill in a title, an address, show a map, a phone number, and hours. I'll leave these alone for the moment. I can edit it. Um, but in, in here, when you customize a widget, yes, you, can, you have to save it. But when you add a widget or delete a, a widget, it doesn't quite save. So now if I view site, it should display the items that I put in there.
I'm going to main sidebar. I've also got the first footer widget area. That's also full of a bunch of stuff. I'm going to take those out. I don't know if it's mine or a quirk or what, but my main sidebar doesn't really do anything, so I moved my contact info from the sidebar down to the footer, first footer widget area. Yes? So I checked it right now, and um, I guess like the front page uh, widgets uh, or the menu, they just put them in like big blocks, like right underneath. It's on the, you can see on the, on the blog page. On the blog page? Oh. Okay, so that goes back to the answer that I give over and over. It depends on the theme. So it would make sense for me to show it where I'm saying, but on mine, for some, oh, yeah, so mine's on the blog page. Interesting. There's probably some other setting somewhere that is conflicting yeah, with this. When you make the page, it has a setting that says, use the default of the default of the theme and then it may be overwritten to, to uh, hide. It's usually a, a home. Yeah. It'll probably say default default. <laughs> you know what I mean though, right? Like we yeah. hide that part. Yeah, for extra customization people can do a bunch of cool tricks here with templates or maybe even hard coding some code. There's probably some conflict somewhere. I'm not going to worry about it too much, but this is sometimes what happens um, in WordPress, that you have one thing conflicting with another. Not that often, but we saw it right here. So I was just kind of playing with it, and instead I put, put that contact info into my first footer widget, and I kind of like how that looks also. That puts a big, interesting-looking map down on the footer area here. And all of this is, is real. It's live. And I can... Um, I'm just curious with the default address for San Diego. Is, it, mm. is that because, like, is the WordPress based out of San Diego or something? Or no? That's a good question. I, okay. for some reason... This is another zip page. Because oh. you know how a lot of the default Apple stuff is... Cupertino. You know, whatever. Yeah. I was just wondering. That'd be cool if it's here. <laughs> We can easily look that up, but that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know why it was smart enough to choose San Diego Mission Boulevard, but yeah. that's interesting. We can obviously change that. So um, maybe that theme, maybe the theme author is based uh, here too, because I I see that a lot when I work with themes. I get a theme, and then I see that the map is automatically populated to the UK because it was a British theme author. So here we can have a bunch of customization that perhaps under my regular customization screen I'm not getting exactly what I want, but depending on how the theme authors develop their site and giving you these boxes, I can then further customize it. Let me show you one of the most powerful widgets there is, even though it looks so unassuming. There's a widget down here called Text. Um, if you scroll down, you'll find one called Text, alphabetically. It says arbitrary text or HTML. It's going to take me a long time to drag it up, so here's a trick. Click on text, and then it says, where do you want to put it? Um, I'm a, uh, whatever, I'm going to put it in the second footer widget area. And then add. So you, you can drag it from the left up to the top, or if you click on it, you can jump quickly to where you want it. Add widget. And what this does is it looks very unassuming. You can write some text like, you know, whatever, and then over here, hello world, whatever. And then when I save that, well, it'll look like text wherever I put it. And you say, well, why is that so powerful? It just says whatever here. Notice it says arbitrary text or HTML. Any valid HTML code here will get rendered, including CSS. So if I had here, if I know a little HTML and I write 
HTML. It will take this code and it'll actually make it active. So I wrote, a, I wrote some code to make a link. That's an active link now that's going to take me to a website. Yeah, what about this? What about if I go to youtube.com and I find an amazing video such as how to use Peach like a pro? Every video on YouTube by default has a share button, share, and they give me the code. That code, Hello everyone, this HTML is code, from PMD Interactive. Let's take a look I at can the paste latest and greatest into this widget on the block, and it's Peach. This is the and Peach I can social embed network. At the moment, it's only available that video for on my site devices. from YouTube. Uh, but eventually, it'll branch out. So if you're an Android user, so that's why user, this is the, the most well powerful Peach plugin. It's available it'll take any valid your Android device. HTML. Let's check it out from or CSS. I don't believe JavaScript. For the first and it will then sign up. Execute it. Have so here I've got my I've got this video that I made me that I made easy. on so I'm gonna go through Peach and I put it on YouTube and it's on you my mean, site. Right now it's I'm, I'm not West. storing it's it brand new. on so, uh, my brand new test. own new server. server. I'm not using up the I space on my own server, email. my own bandwidth, yeah, my own resources. I'm using YouTube, which has infinite space and infinite resources for all intents and purposes. And I'm putting it on my site. Let's me do it right away. People can watch the video on my site even though it's coming from YouTube. Um, we YouTube can skip never these. goes down, and YouTube so never I'll skip that for the moment. And that. I'll simply be that so test user account with a This picture. then allows me so to have any amount screen. of renderable. It's sort of like a mixture of very um, basic Twitter and Slack. HTML, right there. So, yes. This tutorial that starts you off is pretty good. This space, this is your space. Posting to it is a lot like texting. Try saying hello. So this is our space. I'm just simply going to test. If people are searching on Bing and they find that video, yeah. um, to some degree, yes, because this is you know this is the channel of our company, and it's also um, you know uh, one of our presences online. And the more you create a presence online, the more that helps your SEO. Because if it's only my website, that's only one thing Google or Bing can find. But if I'm also on Twitter and YouTube and Pinterest and whatever, that's more stuff people can find in the search engines, and then more traffic back to my site. So we will have an activity on YouTube later on. I think it is a very valuable thing to do for SEO. We'll talk about creating videos and such. We'll have a lesson with some basic video editing. Obviously, there's other classes on this campus to get really good at video editing. We'll spend one, maybe two days or so. We'll learn a little bit of basic YouTube editing, uploading to a YouTube channel and such. And that's a viable way to get traffic. This video here has got 583 views. It's a good amount. But you never know what's going to go viral. We've got another video over here. 16,000 views. Um, 32 views. You don't know what's going to be a hit. Uh, this channel, you know, four months ago, we had, you know, five followers. We've got 75 now, uh, in large in part to that video. So you don't know where your, where your next viral hit is going to be. Uh, you would think something like, well, information on how to make a basic website, it's not that many views. There's some views here on this, on Peach, this social network that just came out. It's 583 views, not so bad. And this could give us more traffic back to the website. We'll have a lesson on that. But the point with WordPress is that any code, we can then add to that widget and it'll execute. So let's say you set up um, some sort of you know affiliate marketing or you go over to what's it called Google uh, Google ad Google AdWords no uh, ad mob AdSense. AdSense you go to Google AdSense you create an AdSense account and what that does is this here's my personal website my blog about comics and stuff I think I saw, showed it last week great you read about comics you got ads on the side well that's a terrible ad but let's say it's a good ad you click on it, I'm making a little money off of that. You can get these Google ads, usually they're relevant, but um, these Google ads that you put on your site, 
okay, that one's cool. If someone clicks on that, I'm going to get a little piece of that. And that's just a little code that they give you. I put it in my WordPress site, and there we go. A clickable element that's making me money on my site. We are not going to quite talk about it in this class, but obviously during lab time or whatever, I can show you that if you'd like. But that's the power of this text widget. It can take any HTML or CSS and render it. It can be very valuable. Depending on your theme, my theme has these six areas where I can add something. Some themes might have more, some themes might have less. Depends on the theme. What we're going toward is making um, this online presence, and this is our like starting point, our, our training wheels at the moment. And eventually we'll make this more serious. Right now it's kind of testing site and so forth, and it would be nice to make it more serious because everything that we're learning here, we want to apply it for real. We want to really do a marketing strategy, which is coming up soon. We want to do Twitter for real. We want to do YouTube for real. You could take this class and everything that we do, you could do it for a fake site that doesn't matter and you delete it at the end of the course, sure. Or you can apply it for real on, an, on your real online activities. Let's say you're in a band. Create a free website here, you've got a platform. Then we'll talk about marketing strategy, we'll talk about social media, we'll talk about keywords and all of that stuff. And You could get traffic to your website for your band and then you've got a button that says book us now and you can get gigs. So whatever you're trying to do online, we'll talk about it deeper next time, but whatever you want to do online, sell something, get donations, have people read your, uh, your angry political commentary, whatever, anything you're trying to do online, all SEO will help you because it'll give you traffic back to your website where then they can accomplish the task. Read that blog post, subscribe to your newsletter, donate to my nonprofit, hire me for a gig, get me hired, here's my resume, whatever. There's... Everything that we've looked at today is related to our homework assignment, and there's one more thing that the homework assignment mentions that I haven't mentioned yet. But let's pull up the homework assignment. Let's go to Blackboard. Let's log into Blackboard and we'll look at the homework. Don't print that out, please, while while the while I'm speaking during during the lab time you can. Let's go to Blackboard. Let's go to Blackboard. Uh, let's go to Assignments. If I haven't finished grading your first assignment, I apologize. I'll get to it very soon. But uh, I've, as long as you sent it to me, I'll be able to grade it to you. Don't worry. But now we've got a second assignment. If you view the, the 02 assignment, WordPress. So a little background info. Create a WordPress account. Check. You've got an address. You need to send me your address so that I know where your website is. Check. And then you mm -hmm. need to accomplish these things. Uh, we talked about it last time, so re rewatch the video from last time or ask me during the lab. You want to set your site title and tagline. We did. We talked about setting the front page to be a static page. If it doesn't quite make sense, see me again. Create a home page that explains in one paragraph what your site is about. So we, ju we just wrote, welcome. You need to write a paragraph about what your site is about. Um, then you need to add a blog post, 100 words. We didn't do that today, but we played with blog posts last time, very briefly. I want you to explore that, explore how to add a blog post. You want 100 words. WordPress will tell you at the bottom how many words you have. And you're going to see you're going to get to 100 words pretty fast. If you do more, fine. If you do less, not so good. You want to be 100 words or more. Because the more content you create, the better for SEO. If you blog, you know, once a month, 
a hundred words, that's a great goal. You're creating content, you're putting it out to the world for Google to find, for Bing to find, for Yahoo to find, whatever, for people to find on Twitter. If you don't put out content on a regular basis, you've only got your website to show for it, and that might not be enough nowadays because there are many other web designers that are challenging you. There are many other realtors. There are many other babysitters. There are many other dog walkers. There are many other bakeries. Everyone's in competition with everyone. But the more content that you create, you'll stand out from the competition. And blogging is one way. We'll have a deeper lesson later on blogging, but I want to start off with here. One blog post with one picture and a link. You can figure that out. Um, choose a theme. We've all got the same theme right now. I want to see you choose a different theme and maybe customize it a bit. Make sure your menu, make sure your menu is set up properly for your posts and pages. Your post is your blog. Your pages are your pages about home and so forth any external link, so link it to something else, whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> submit it, it's due a week from today. It's worth 10 points to your subject. You're gonna send me an email basically that is your address so that I know it's your assignment. You're gonna do all of this on your WordPress. You'll be graded on the completeness of each of the tasks. If you didn't do Number four, you're not going to get an A. You have to do all of the items required here. I'm not really going to be grading on grammar and all of that. I should, but I'm not. And um, then you put this subject so that I know which assignment it is, so that I don't lose your email. I get lots of emails. It's worth 10 points a week from today, 11 p.m. Remember, I have. we usually have some lab time at the end of the day. We're going to break in a moment so you can get started and ask questions and, and so forth. That's the assignment. Any questions on the assignment? I'm going to upload this video in just a moment so you can review it. Last week's is also uploaded. If you want the links to the video, send me an email and I'll send you the video from previous days. So that's it for the moment. And when we come back next time, we'll look at more, more, more stuff as per uh, check out, remember to check out the syllabus's calendar. We're following the calendar usually pretty well, and let's look at what's next week, and we'll do it next week. So that's it for the moment.